Salamun alaykum. Peace be with you. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the entirely merciful, the specially merciful. My name is Ayub Karim. Welcome to my channel, Quran Inspires Me. So people want to know from me because they say that I claim that the Quran is a circular revelation based on the dictates of God Almighty and that Prophet Muhammad did not practice a religion because he practiced a kind of circularism that is based on the directives of the Quran. So they would like to know if I can substantiate such a claim and if I can, how do I substantiate this claim? Let us take the formula, this scientific formula, E is equal to mc squared. Now all of us have some idea of what this E equals to mc squared is all about. But one thing for sure, we all know that it is a scientific equation. Whether we understand it in its totality or whether we have some inkling of whatever it is, we acknowledge and accept that it is a scientific equation. We do not doubt that. So my question to everybody, whether you are a religionist or not, my question to you is, what is religious about E is equal to mc squared? Then we have other equations like s is equal to d over t, where s is the average speed and d is the total distance traveled and where t is the total time taken to cover that distance. This is the average speed formula. Then we have another formula, a is equal to v minus u over t. This is the formula to calculate acceleration. The next one is the density formula, d is equal to m over v. The next formula, I take it that most people are aware of, that is Newton's second law, the equation to calculate force, f is equal to m times a. Then we have the formula to calculate power, which is p equals to w over t. I have only provided a few basic equations on physics. Then we have chemical equations and mathematical equations and all these equations are so many, so, so many that it becomes mind boggling. And no matter how mind boggling they are, the sanity of all these equations is that they are all accurate, even to the 10 decimal point. I mean that these formulas are so damn accurate that we unknowingly place more faith in these formulas than in most aspects of our belief and religion. But we will not admit it. So we acknowledge and accept all these equations, whether they are on physics or chemistry or mathematics. My second most important question is, what is religious about all these equations? All I need to know is, what is religious about these equations? Does it belong to Hinduism? Does it belong to Sunnism or Shiism? Does it belong to Christianity? Which religion can claim or have a claim to any of these equations? Is there any religion? No. No religion can have a claim to any of these equations. But the chances are that the Sunnis might make a claim for it because they are the only ones that believe that they are the only ones that are right in this dunya and everybody else is going to hell. If they only knew that they are the biggest mushriks on this God-given earth. So the bottom line is that none of these equations have anything religious about them. So that discards religion. But now, here is a more important question that we need to ask ourselves. If these equations are not religious, then we are compelled to ask ourselves the question, if they are not religious, then what are they? The answer is, they are scientific equations. So by extension, they are circular scientific equations. But the most important question is, who created these equations? Yes, who created these scientific equations? Who created these circular scientific equations? Well, I did some research. And it was definitely not the Pope. And it was definitely not some Shia ulama. And most definitely it was not some Sunni ulama. This is easy and simple. The correct answer is that God Almighty, Allah, created these circular scientific equations. Now, the follow-up question is, why will God Almighty, why will Allah create non-religious equations? Are you listening to what I am asking? Everybody says that God Almighty gave all these religions whether it is Hinduism, Christianity or Sunnism. But why will God Almighty, Allah, create equations that are non-religious? 
I mean, what is religious about E equals to mc squared? What is religious about Newton's second law? F equals to m times a. And what is religious about P equals to W over T, where P is the power, W is the work done, and T is the time taken to do that work? What is religious about that? So we take sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. Both are very dangerous and poisonous chemicals. If you drink either one of them, you will die. However, the most merciful creator gave us a non-religious circular scientific equation to work by. That is, if you study the equations of Allah, you will come to understand that if you mix both these deadly chemicals, I advise you please do not try this at home. These chemicals are poisonous and very dangerous. So when you mix these two chemicals, that is sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid, you will get H2O, which is water, and NaCl, which is sodium chloride. Do you know what sodium chloride is? It is ordinary table salt from two dangerous chemicals. So what is religious about this chemical equation? And what is religious about the equations that Allah created for our benefit? Can anybody tell me how does this pertain to the birth, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ? How does it pertain to you facing the Kaaba and reading namaz five times a day? How does it? How does your religiosity affect your relationship with these equations that Allah created except that you benefit more from these equations than you benefit from your religion, no matter what your religion is? So, when you look into the kitchen, there are more chemical reactions taking place in the kitchen than anywhere else in your house. So, if there were no chemical reactions created by Allah, we all will be eating food that is non-cooked, that cannot be cooked. Please think about that. So all these equations were created by Allah. It is just that great scholars, great ulama like Al-Khwarizmi, Ibn Haytham, Avicenna, Ibn Rushud, Isaac Newton and Albert Einstein, these great ulama were pioneers in discovering some of these equations and their practical usage. The Abbasid rulers saw the monetary gains of these discoveries and wanted to rule the entire empire with brutal force but with gentle persuasion. So they paid people like Imam Bukhari, Imam Muslim and others to create the Ahadith and they saw that the Ahadith were working well into subjugating the people of the theoretical rule. So where lies the problem? The problem is that people do not know who God Almighty, who Allah is. The Christians will tell you that Jesus is God. And the Sunnis and Shias will tell you that Allah is the Almighty Creator of this grand universe. Unfortunately, the Christians do not know Jesus. And the Sunnis and Shias do not know who Allah is. So, in order to understand who Allah is, we have to go to the Quran and study the attributes of Allah. And I suggest the best place to start with the attributes of Allah is Surah Ikhlas. And when I say study, I mean study. I do not mean that you listen to the melodious tune of Asma'ul Husna. That will not get you anywhere near understanding his attributes. One of Allah's attributes is As-Samad. And everybody says, this means that Allah is eternal, the absolute. This was probably the best translation they could do during that era of history. So As-Samad, in relation to Lam Yalid wa Lam Yulad, when we look at this within the entire context, As-Samad does not mean eternal, absolute. As-Samad basically means the singularity or the first cause or the all-intelligent because without Allah being the all-intelligent singular first cause, none of this would have existed. This grand universe would never have come into existence without As-Samad, the all-intelligent singular first cause. Just look at the universe and study the intelligence, the equations in creating this magnificent universe. And if the universe is too much for us to handle, then look at Mother Earth and see the intelligence and equations applied in the creation of just the Earth. And if that is still too much for us to handle, then look at ourselves and deeply think about how we are created and that Allah gave us some of that intelligence to think and give gratitude. But unfortunately, the Sunni world appreciates the Imam Bukhari and the so-called learned men more than As-Samad. So we need to learn who Allah is. He is As-Samad, 
the all intelligent and when we look at the intelligence applied in the creation of the universe it is absolutely mind boggling and breathtaking he is a samad so allah single handedly metaphorically speaking created everything without the help of anyone so allah is the singularity he is a samad the first cause remember kun fayakun be and it is that is the first cause so allah is not a religious being that's passing out religious laws fatwas no he is not that all these equations are not fatwas all these equations are the laws of allah which are circular laws the concept of kun fayakun is circular in itself so when allah said kun meaning be billions and billions of years ago then all his laws came into being systematically whether it is a law of gravity velocity acceleration rotation revolution motion force density power and all the other laws of allah came into existence and we had to learn all this which we were doing well that was until the sunnis took over the various empires and replaced the houses of wisdoms with their ulums so i believe that there is nothing religious about b and it is kun fayakun it is purely circular hence there is nothing religious about allah this is more than enough evidence that allah did not give anyone any religion including sunnism all religions in the world including sunnism are all man made fabricated religions which are the handiwork of the devil the whispers of iblis one of the strangest phenomena i have experienced is with sunnis all my family members are still sunnis and i discuss these issues with them whenever i get a chance to do so so this is how our dialogue goes i ask them did allah create judaism they say no i ask them did allah create christianity they say no did allah create hinduism or buddhism the answer is no did allah create shiaism they say no so i pursue further now i ask them so what makes you think that allah created sunnism where is your proof that allah created sunnism for you people this is when most of them go silent there were only two family members who actually told me that allah gave us the ahle sunnah wal jamaah keep on dreaming that was another first hand experience of iblis at work did i say anything more now let us look at ourselves the human body to establish that allah created laws that are of circular nature and that allah is not a religious god so allah created us based on human physiology and psychology allah created laws within us so that our psychophysiology works at its optimum we are created in a manner that we will automatically strive or fight for survival when we are put in situations that threatens our existence individually and our community for example when you fall into raging waters we have a muscular system that is strongly supported by our skeletal system and then we have the external support which is allah's law of buoyancy and if we know how to use these then we can swim to safety that is our natural instinct which is survival if we are caught in a house that is on fire we will have to escape from that house otherwise the fire will burn us to death so we need to run away from the fire we can pray if you want but you will still have to run away from the fire that will be your natural instinct again survival so what is religious about survival now when we look at the fight for survival a hindu will strive to survive so will a christian and so will a sunni and even an atheist so the fight for survival or striving for survival is not a religious thing so we cannot say that god saved him because he was a christian nor can we say that allah saved him because he was a sunni furthermore we cannot claim that god saved him because he went to church every sunday and we cannot say that allah saved him because he read his five time namaz another beautiful example of us being created based on secularism is the concept of sex and the activity of having sex but first let me say this i appeal to all of you please subscribe share like and comment also 
please hit the notification bell so that you will be informed of my next video upload. Your participation will greatly help. Thank you. So, what is religious about me being male and you being female? This is a very lengthy topic. So for now, just think about this. So Allah ordained for us the activity of having sex. The primary purpose is for procreating and then of course the spin-off is pleasure. He has ordained permissible sex which is with our spouse and then there is illicit sex which Allah has cautioned us against as this would be a transgression. So whether you are having permissible sex or indulging in illicit sex, the common factor is that you will reach orgasm. Irrespective of whether it is halal sex or forbidden sex, you will still experience orgasm. Why? Because that is our physiological makeup. That is how we have been created. That is the laws of Allah that is functioning within our bodies. So, physiologically speaking, there is nothing religious about halal sex and illicit sex. But if you are looking at it based on secularism, then you will know what is permissible and what is transgression. There is a difference between religion and secularism. So again, the question is, what is religious about having sex? So, when we look at our psychological makeup and depends what is put into our minds, then that will determine for us of what is good for us and what is bad for our minds and bodies. So, the end result of having sex, whether permissible or not, the end result will be the same, but the effects of the human psychology will be different. And so, Allah gave us the Quran. This was for right guidance, not for being religious. Because Allah is not stupid. He won't give us circular laws and then tell you to be religious. He gave us this guidance so that you will still remain a circular person. You will practice circularism, but you will be on right guidance. Now, Allah will not interfere in the rights and wrongs of what mankind does. Allah has reserved that for the day of judgment. In the meantime, his laws will prevail. That is the law. So these people must not come up with the stories to claim that their religion is the right one. And you know, what I don't understand is that how easily influenced can the Sunni world be and the Shia world be to be taken on on a joyride by these so-called ulama. These are the most stupid people you can find on the earth and yet we will submit ourselves to their stupidity. I mean, do you not ever sit and think about our creator? You have more than a hundred attributes in the Quran. Go and study these attributes, please. And you will see that Allah is not stupid and therefore he will not make the stupid ulama our leaders. You have made them your leaders. Yes, you. That is why you are dying in the doldrums of stupidity and grief. Now here is the irony. Or should I say stupidity? Either irony or stupidity. But I think it is downright hypocrisy with all these religious people. Is that they would go to the mosque, the temples, the churches or wherever it is. And they would pray to the God or gods. But then when they are out of that prayer mode or that religious mode. They will tend to ultimately and totally and absolutely rely on what science has discovered. They would live their lives based on circularism. For example, you take anybody's daily life, whether religious or non-religious. From the time they get up in the morning, it is based on circularism. It is based on things that were invented by scientists, not anything that were done by today's so-called ulama, priests or monks. So, when you get up in the morning to begin your day, you go to the toilet. What is religious about going to the toilet? Yes, ask yourself, what is religious about going to the toilet? You can urinate and go out is because of the laws of Allah that are functioning within your bodies that makes it possible for you to relieve yourself. You do not need a special dua for that. But our so-called learned men fabricated the dua especially for that. I wonder how the Christian and Hindus are relieving themselves because they do not recite the dua our so-called ulama taught us. Then we have our coffee or tea. So we do not have to make dua to make the coffee granules into drinkable coffee. You just have to add hot water and presto, you have coffee. 
If you want tea, all you have to do is put a tea bag, add hot water and again, presto, you have tea. Coffee and tea are grown on trees. You do not need a special dua for it to enter your kitchen. You know what you have to do to obtain tea or coffee. So from the time the coffee or tea leaves are harvested, they go through a series of circular processes, not religious, circular processes. They go through a series of those circular processes to make that tea or coffee available for you to purchase. There is no special dua to make tea bags. The process of making tea bags is purely circular, nothing magical. The same principle applies to our clothes. We cannot pluck cotton from the trees and expect it to become cotton threads so that we can weave material out of it. No dua is going to do that for you. You cannot shear a sheep and then expect it to turn to strands of wool so that you can knit a jersey or a sweater. It's not going to happen. The raw wool and cotton has to go through a physical process of refinement which is a circular procedure so that the wool and cotton becomes easily available. There is nothing religious about these procedures and it goes through machinery to do this. Visit a textile factory and you will see circularism at work. Not religion, circularism. Let me give you just one more example. You have a bucket of water. You can recite a million salawats. You can recite a million Daru Sharif. You can call out a million Allahu Akbars. That water in the bucket will not change to fuel. You want fuel, you either extract it from crude oil or manufacture it from coal and water. And there are equations for this. There are laws, there are Allah's laws for attaining this. And there is nothing religious about the wool, the cotton, fuel and everything else about our lives. They are all based on circularism and not religion right from the time we are born. Is there anything religious about cutting the umbilical cord? Tell me, when a Christian or Hindu doctor cuts the umbilical cord of a baby born to a Sunni couple, will that be considered a religious or a non-religious act? So, our so-called ulama makes religious laws upon religious laws and they make prayer upon prayer just to keep themselves busy, just to make them look important. Because if we go according to these circular equations, these laws of Allah, these people will be without work. They will be jobless because we will be relying entirely on the universal laws of Allah and not the fabricated religious laws the so-called ulama and Islamic scholars made. So, all these equations are the laws of Allah coming from a circular creator, as samad who gave us the Quran, a circular book and sent us a prophet who practiced circularism based on the directives of the Quran. So, coming back to E equals to MC squared, what is E equals to MC squared and what are all the other equations that Allah created in this universe? All these laws, all these universal laws, including E is equal to MC squared, are actually the angels of Allah or at other times referred to as the forces of nature. These circular equations, these laws of Allah are the angels of Allah within the context of the Quran. There is nothing religious about these forces of Allah, these laws of Allah, the angels of Allah. So, if you are religious, you automatically negate the angels of Allah. You negate the forces of Allah. You negate the circular scientific equations of Allah. That means you are under the influence of Iblis and not guided by Allah. So if you know and understand these laws of Allah, you will show more gratitude to our creator than the so-called ulama and Islamic scholars. We need to seriously think about this. And you know, in my life, there is no room for these so-called ulama and Islamic scholars. I have thrown them out of my life a long time ago. I do not need them. So, are you going to get rid of them from your life and attach yourselves to the Quran and be guided? Until my next video, I am Ayub Karim from Quran Inspires Me. Understand the Quran to experience the revelation. Salamun Alaikum. Peace be with you.